Hell yeah, I built this base. Slap like. Very nice base. Now you have to pause the video where you slap it. Do it now. What's up, slappers? Hello everyone, my name is Paul, and in this video I will be showing you how I built this bass guitar. I was actually editing this video while I noticed that the post that I put on on Davy504 subreddit actually made it onto Zdai, and of course I wasn't gonna let this opportunity go to waste, and I was going to slap it so I could show Davy like he asked for me. He gave me permission to slap, so I might as well just use it. Um, side note, I'm not that good of a bass guitarist, I only started playing an instrument uh, one year ago, um, exactly one year ago for now, um, and Davey was actually the motivation for me to start learning the bass guitar, which is the first instrument that I've ever laid my hands on, so don't expect too much, but here's me slapping the <laughs> bass guitar that I made. Enjoy! Alright, so that short segment was me just slapping it, and right now I'm going to go to the main part of the video, which is me building it. Um, that's the rest of this entire video, so um, I hope you like it, and please enjoy the rest of the original video. I decided early on that I wanted to make a Thunderbird shaped bass guitar, so I started out by tracing this design on a piece of wood. This wood is actually ash wood, which I got from a local dealer, and it's very well known for being a very good tone wood. Using a jigsaw, I sawed out the rough shape of the wood. I use the base of the neck to draw out where the slot should be cut to connect the neck to the body. Using a rasp and a belt sander, I did more rough shaping. Using a small chisel, I cut out a little groove where the middle part of the Thunderbird body has to be thicker than the rest. Then I use sanding paper to sand off all of the excess wood that was on the other side of the groove.
Right here you can see me use more sandpaper to shape and smooth out the body, rounding off those sharp edges. Here you can see me measuring out how far down the bridge should be attached. This is double the distance from the nut to the 12th fret. My co-worker let me use his router to route out all the holes and the slots in the body. I'm using a drill bit with some tape to measure out the depth and also to make tighter inside corners. The neck had to be sunk down into the body about 2cm to make sure that the fretboard would be high up enough but not too high. As you can see at the end it's a beautifully tight fit. The electronics have to go inside the body, so I'm drawing out a part to be carved out with the router to house them in. The pickup is also traced onto the wood and then the cavity is carved away, so the pickup easily slides into place. For the housing of the electronics, I'm using exactly the same method with the drill bit. Two foam risers will hold up the pickup and as you can see it fits snugly inside.
The knobs and jack plate need to be installed, so I draw out the templates. For the finish of the body, I needed to experiment a little bit. I used fire, vinegar and metals, and spray paint to find a nice finish for the wood. I ended up using a torch to burn the edges and then oiling and lacquering. Here you can see me installing the pickup to make sure it will fit later on. The electronics will need to fit inside, after which I'll solder them. Before the body is completely finished, I drilled holes for the pop meters to go through and the jack plate to be sunken into. The bridge is also test fitted. I'm using a little rectangular neck plate to make sure the neck has a sturdy connection with the base. The holes I marked out before are drilled and a saddle for the plate to sit in is routed out as well. I also created a ridge for the cover plate of the electronics to sit on. The jack plate can now be mounted. The shaping of the headstock I thought about for days while building the rest of the base, and at one point I just decided on a shape and stuck with it. I'm really happy with the shape now, and I've gotten a lot of compliments of people that say it complements the shape of the body really well. Before I knew what to use for a pick guard and electronics cover plate, I used brass because I thought that it would look cool. As you'll see later, I changed this to pick guard material. Next, I marked out the tuners on the headstock and test fit all of them to make sure they worked and fit well. The tuner that I use for the low E string is a hip shot extender tuner, which allows me to quickly drop the E string into drop D. This really helps me play well because I play a lot of songs in drop D uh, and so I can easily switch between E, so standard, and drop D tuning. As you can see me holding it, the guitar is now fully functional except for the electronics. To give the body some more character, I decided to go with a propane burner to roast the edge of the wood and give it like a burst kind of look.
I really like the way it's come out after rigorously sanding, then burning, then applying a coat of boiled linseed oil and then nitrocellulose lacquer. To finish up the neck, I sanded the entire thing and used boiled linseed oil to make it super smooth and nice to play on. After this, I reassembled part of the guitar and got to work on the electronics. The electronics of this build cost me around 250 euros and they're original Music Man Stingray replacements. I love the sound of Stingrays and so I wanted to incorporate it into this first bass I've ever built. I started off by shielding the pickup hole and also the electronics hole using aluminium tape. After simply soldering the circuit, as described in the Music Man wiring diagram, the bass is ready to be played. Overall, I'm super happy with the result. For the 350 euros that I sank into this project, I got a bass that sounds fantastic, plays fantastic, and to my humble opinion, I think it also looks pretty fucking cool. Um, I hope that you also enjoyed watching me make it, and if you have any suggestions or any um, comments or things you want me to build next, please leave them in the comments below. Also, please do not forget to like this video, to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, and also to share this video with all of your friends that might be interested in these same kinds of projects. I hope to see you guys soon in a new build video, but until then, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.